In the last lesson, we finished up talking about the inner join, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about both the left and right outer joints. And those are essentially the same thing, it just depends on the order in which those tables appear that we're joining to and from. If you haven't done so already, take a look at the document that's attached to the first video lesson in this join section. There's some information about the left and right outer join that'll be helpful for you to look at as you follow along with these video lessons. So just like we did with the inner join, we're gonna look at a Venn diagram for the left and right outer join. So the inner join was the intersection of two tables or two sets. So only those values or those rows that appeared in both tables would have the rows returned to the result set. A left outer join is a little bit different. So if we go back to this inner join, remember when we first brought this up, we started to say, okay, let's assume table A is a list of, list of customers, table B is a table full of employees. If I wanted to find the last purchase date from the customer's table and the hire date from the employee's table for those individuals that were both customers and employees, we would use an inner join because we'd get the intersection of these tables or only the information where that individual was present in both the customers and the employee table. Where a left and right outer join differ slightly is the left outer join says, show me all customer information, or in this case, the last, last purchase date. And if they are an employee, show me their hire date. If they're not an employee, fine. I still wanna see their customer information, but what I'm gonna see in that hire date column is a null value for those customers that are not also employees. So we have the entirety of table A shaded and only the intersection, intersection shaded in table B. So for only those rows or those individuals that are both a customer and an employee, will we see the hire date or information from the employee table. But no matter what, we're gonna see all the information for the customers. And so I said earlier that the left and right outer join are essentially the same type of join. This Venn diagram is a right outer join. The only difference is which table comes first. We'll look at an example later on where we use the same tables. One is gonna be a left outer join. Then we're gonna switch the order and make it a right outer join and we're actually gonna get the same exact answer. So you can really think of a left and right outer join more or less as the same type of join. It's just gonna be a matter of order. So our first example is going to go back to that product and product subcategory example that we looked at before. Except this time, we're gonna find all product information regardless of whether or not that product is associated with the product subcategory. If the product is associated with the product subcategory, let's return that product subcategory name. Otherwise, I still wanna see the product information. So the query we used last time was we're gonna select I'll fill in the column names in a second. So from production of product P, we wanted to see P.name and P.product number. And again, this represents the name column from P or production.product and the product number column from P or production.product. Now in the previous example, production product subcategory, I'll call that PS, and we joined on the product subcategory ID columns in bulk tables. And then I'm going to add in the name column from production.product or PS, and we'll give it an alias product subcategory name. Now, when I execute this, I get the product name, the product number, and the product subcategory name. But notice I only have 295 rows. This is because of the 504 rows that we have in our production.product table, only 295 of them have a product subcategory ID that is either non-null or exists in the product subcategory table. So again, that's going back to the intersection of the tables or the sets that we talked about in the last couple of pictures. Join outer join is different, is suppose I want to return the product name and the product number, and then if it has a product subcategory, bring that name back and put it in this column. If it doesn't, leave it null. So to do that, we're gonna switch this inner join just to a left outer join. Now we're gonna go from 295 rows to 
504 rows. And immediately you'll see the difference here. This adjustable race or bearing ball product does not have a product subcategory ID. Therefore, there's no match on that ID to the production.product subcategory table. Since there's no match, SQL can't find a value to return, so it places a null. So if we go back to our Venn diagram here, let's assume table A represents products, table B represents products of categories. I returned all product information regardless of whether or not that particular product was associated with a product subcategory. If it was associated with a product subcategory, great, return that product subcategory name. Otherwise, put a null there. And that's exactly what we did with this query. Now watch what happens if I do this, and I'm going to leave this query up. I'm going to write, just steal this, and instead of saying select p.name, p.product number, ps.name from production.product, I'm going to say from production.products of category. Instead of doing a left outer join, I'm going to do a right outer join to production.product, call it p, and I'm going to join still on these products of category IDs. The order in which I put the columns in this on line is irrelevant. So I could put ps.products of category ID equals p.products of category ID. It's going to be the same answer. But the thing I want you to notice here is in the first problem or in the first practice problem we did from production.product left outer joint or joint to production.products of category. Now we're doing from production.products of category right outer join instead of left, but right outer join to production.product. If I execute this, we actually get the same exact answer. And you can validate this on your own. But the point I want to emphasize here is that the left and right outer join are essentially the same join. It's just a matter of ordering. One, we did product left outer join to subcategory. This time we're doing subcategory right outer join to product. We get the same answer. So we're doing the same thing. We're just changing the order in which SQL is evaluating the joinings. So that's all we're going to do for this particular lesson. We're going to look at a couple more examples of the left and right outer join in the next lesson, and hopefully that should wrap up everything that we want to talk about, want to talk about with joins and give you a good foundation so that we can start joining from multiple tables and have larger, more comp. So let's take a look at this table called sales.sales order header. This table essentially represents the invoice summary for orders that are placed. So it has a sales order number, if there's an associated purchase order number, an ID for the customer, for the salesperson, for the territory, some address information. But the big thing that we're going to be interested in, especially as we get into some of the later problems when we start talking about aggregations and groupings, we see the total amount and the total freight, total tax for this particular sale. What we're going to do is take a look at these sales orders but join out to various tables like sales.salesperson, which stores information about the salespeople, and some of the sales territories, so that instead of having an ID, we can see the territory name, or the salesperson name, or the customer name. These are things we couldn't do until we had covered the concept of joins. And in particular, we needed to cover the concept of outer joins in case, for example, and if I scroll down, I should see some right away, there are some orders that are not associated with salespeople. If we join from the sales order information to the salesperson table using an inner join, these particular rows that aren't associated with the salesperson, where the salesperson ID is null, they would not be returned. So we'd be getting some missing information. So to start off, let's join from the sales order header table to the sales.salesperson table. Given what we just said here about how there are some null values in the salesperson ID column in sales.salesorder header, I want to do a left outer join to the salesperson table so that I see all rows regardless of whether or not they have a salesperson associated with them. So I'm just going to call sales order header SOH, again just giving it a table alias, and I want a left outer join to sales.salesperson, and we'll call this SP. And now, we're, and now we're going to join on the Business entity ID value from salesperson 
equal to the salesperson ID from sales order header. A completely valid question might be, why? Why do you know to join these two columns together? So if I go down in the Object Explorer to the sales.salesorderheader .sales order header table, and I double click on, or I open up the keys folder, I find this sales order header, salesperson, salesperson ID, foreign key relationship created in sales.sales order header. If I double click on this, this foreign key relationships table comes up. This is where the foreign key relationships and the connections amongst tables are defined. If I click on this tables and columns specification row, and then the ellipsis button here, this here, this tables and columns window tells me the foreign key relationship between the sales.sales order header table and the sales.sales person table. What it's saying is that the salesperson ID column in sales.sales order header has a foreign key relationship to the business entity ID column in sales.sales person. Or in other words, if I want to connect these two tables using the salesperson ID column, I have to connect it to the business entity ID column of sales.sales person. So you can do this for any type of relationship. If you're trying to figure out how to join two tables, take a look at the, the keys and open up this tables and columns window so you can see how they are related. So back to our query, let's just take a look at what's in the sales.salesperson table. And you'll notice that it doesn't have any first name or last name information. We know that there's this table person.person .person that has first name and last name information because we've used that in previous lessons and in previous examples. In salesperson, we have this business entity ID, which, if we remember, is the primary key of the person.person .person table. So if I go over to the sales.salesperson object and open up the keys, I'll see this salesperson employee business entity ID key. I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to go click on the ellipsis here. What this tells me is that the business entity ID column of sales.salesperson has a relationship to the business entity ID column of human resources.employee. So if I want to connect to another table using this business entity ID, I should connect to this human resources.employee table. So I'm going to create that join. So I'm going to create that join. We're going to stick with the left outer join because, again, we want all sales orders or all rows for sales orders, regardless of whether or not a salesperson exists. So I'm going to left outer join to human resources.employee, call that E, on the business entity ID of both human resources.employee and salesperson. But this human resources.employee table, as we've seen before, also does not contain any first name, last name information. So if we scroll up to the human resources.employee table and find the key associated with the business entity ID column, we see that we can connect the human resources.employee table with the person.person .person table, which is the table we wanted to get to right from the start, through these business entity ID columns. So now I'm going to say left out or join to person.person, .person, call that PP. Again, on the business entity ID column and person by person for when it equals the business entity ID column from human resources employee. So let's add in the columns we want to see now. So we only want to see the first name and last name columns from person by person. And then let's also see the sales order number from sales order header and the total due. We'll call that as sales amount. So now when I run this, I get all 31,465 rows from sales.sales order header. If that sale was associated with the salesperson, I get that person's first name and last name. If the sales order was not associated with the salesperson, I'll get a null value for this first name and last name columns information. Looking at this, you could have eliminated this join from salesperson to employee and just gone directly from salesperson to person to person. You can make that jump 
once you become familiar with the database and you know how the information is stored, I would not recommend that on a database that you're not familiar with because you're not sure of the relationships amongst the tables, does the grain change, things like that. So we could have eliminated this join and just join directly from salesperson to person to person on the business entity ID. But again, we're following the proper channels. We're identifying the connections between salesperson and employee and then employee to person to person. So this is the more formal way of doing this. Now let's add one other change to this. If we look at the sales.sales .sales order header table, there is a row called there is a row called territory ID. This represents the sales territory. And now suppose we want to include the territory name in our query up here. There's a table called sales dot sales territory. And in there we have that territory ID and we also have the name of the territory. If we were to check the keys over here in the object explorer, we would see that we could join the sales order header table to the sales territory table using the territory ID column from each. So let's do that so that we can return the territory name and include it in our select clause. I'm going to use a left outer join because I don't want to assume that every sales order or every row in sales order header is associated with the sales territory. So if every sales order has an associated sales territory, then a left outer join and an inner, inner join are going to give me the same exact result. But since I don't know, we're going to play it safe and use a left outer join and assume that I want to see every sales order regardless of whether or not they have a sales territory. So we're going to say left outer join to sales not sales territory, call that T. And we're going to join on the territory ID from sales territory equaling the territory ID from sales dot sales order header. Now I'm going to go up into my select clause and add this T dot name column or the name column from sales dot sales territory. And we'll call it as territory name. Now when I run this, I get both the name, first name, and last name of the salesperson if a salesperson was associated with that sales order. I get the sales order number and sales amount. And regardless of whether or not whether or not each sales order was associated with the sales territory, I get the name of that territory, or I return a null value. I believe every sales order has an associated territory name. So if we did an inner join, we would get the same result. But again, we're playing it safe and we're just ensuring that we're getting complete results. And, next, and what I want to do is use joins along with the where clause and the order by clause so that we're using the select, the from, different joining methods, and the where and order by clause all in the same statement. So we're using everything that we've learned in one query. So to do that, let's just keep this particular query up and suppose that we only wanted to see those sales orders where the territory was northwest. If you think of these joins all as part of the from clause, then it follows that the where clause would come after all the joins or come after the from clause. So we're going to go to a new line and type where. Now we want to filter on the territory name. So we want to say where, and this is where I have to be careful. I have to say where t dot name over the name column from sales dot sales territory equals northwest. When I execute that, I drop significantly. I get only those rows from sales dot sales order header where the sales territory matches up to the territory of northwest. Now suppose I want to order these results by the sales amount column or the total due column from sales order header. I can say order by, and I could say order by four. Let's say descending order. I execute that. And now I have the largest sales values at the top. I could also say order by sales amount. Because again, the order by clause allows you to use the ordinal or the alias. Or I could say order by SOH.total due. And I get the same answer. I could just say order by total due. And I've been very careful to use table aliases 
with all these columns, the reason that we can just put total due as opposed to SOH.total due is because no other table has a column called total due. So SQL doesn't have to have a table alias to indicate what table that particular column comes from. If there were a column, say business entity ID, which we know is in multiple tables that we wanted to return to our slot clause, I would have to specify the table that I wanted to pull that from, or I would have to have the table alias in front of the column to indicate what table SQL should return that column from. So it's a little subtlety, and we've kind of seen it a few times with the name column with the product and subcategories so that we don't have ambiguity and that SQL knows what column to return the information from. So we've done a little bit with inner joins and a bit with left and right outer joins, which again are essentially the same thing, it's just a matter of order. And we've now included those joins in a complete SQL statement that uses all of the clauses that we've learned up to this point. In the document attached to the first video lecture of this section, there's a brief outline of the full outer join, which I'm not going to spend any time talking about in these lectures, but just take a look at the brief description that's included in that document. Take a look at the Venn diagram, and if we run into some problems later on where the full outer join could be used, I'll take a little bit more time and explain it.